from a from a perspective, from a government perspective, someone that was sitting at the emergency operation center, there have been some there have been progress. Of course, there's a lot that's left to be done, but there has been progress. That's for one. Second, you must also keep in mind that you will never there is there will always be frustrations. There will always be areas that are you know that need to be enhanced and to be uh, uh, fine tuned. But the good news is that we have been able to have everyone at the table. And when I say everyone, I'm talking about specifically the humanitarian community. You are not in a, in a perfect environment and there is no, no one size fits all uh, type of solutions. But it's good to have this, this type of feedback so we can reflect, learn the lessons and move forward with you know, how we can progress and make it better. I think it's easy to understand that people are frustrated because at the end of the day, what is happening it's a breakdown of the confidence, a breakdown of trust. Uh, people feel that they are stuck in a situation where there is little improvement. And that impacts the way humanitarian assistance is being perceived. And I think needs to be attacked. Uh, there is room for improvement. Absolutely, yes. But I think, in my opinion, that situation has evolved positively. We're still far away from where we want to, but I think there is progress and that needs to be acknowledged. There's no easy fix for these kind of situations, and I think it's going to take some time. Let's not forget Haiti is the only LDC in the region, uh, and, and, and that also uh, sets a little bit the context against which we are operating. There wasn't a surprise, any surprise when it comes to the findings. Um, if anything, these have been issues that have been there forever. And in so many ways, I can talk about what happened in 2010 has been something that really amplified so of the context in terms of the humanitarian development and the aid context in Haiti. Because we receive a lot of money and there was, there was a lot of attention, you know, it just became very visible internationally. I wish I were as positive and as um, uh, as positive as my colleagues here. Uh, but I guess working with communities, it is not that there hasn't been an improvement, except that the real structural change that needs to happen, I haven't seen. We haven't seen. In terms of needs assessment, for instance, to make sure that we are able to target much better uh, our humanitarian assistance, definitely we need to allocate more time and more resources to have more granular information, more uh, uh, inf information with more detail that eventually would allow us to uh, provide better responses. We need to improve the, the information channels that we have set up so far. So far, I think uh, in many instances, maybe the information channels just a one way street. We need to make sure that we are listening in a listening mode and we establish a two-way communication system. We need to make sure that we can target very specific key actors at the community level with whom we can work to make sure that our assistance also is responsive uh, and much more targeted to needs on the ground. And I'm talking about working much more closely with religious leaders, with local authorities, with elders, with local associations and local organizations. I think those are also areas where we need to improve. One key lesson learned in Haiti, not only in 2010, but I would say over the last decades, is that the international system and humanitarian community needs to work hand in hand with the national authorities, not bypassing them, but supporting them. The idea, again, is making sure that we uh, are not delivering our assistance on the basis of assessments and interventions that are being discussed at the headquarters level, meaning at the Pope France level, but actually we can work with the communities, listen to them and making sure that those inputs are being considered from A to Z, from needs assessment to implementation to monitoring and evaluation. I think those are three concrete things that the humanitarian community has been doing in Haiti. I think as a result of that, I think we're better equipped but of course, there's always room for improvement. There are multiple levels to, to the response. There is what we can bring because uh, there are things that we do, but also there is the work that we do with our partners in the, com the humanitarian community. But you also have the renegade organizations and there are plenty of them down on the ground. They bypass everything, they fly under the radar and they actually act 
on the ground. And this is the, this is the real challenge that we have right now, is to actually get them under that same roof so they can be part of the, the, the conversation, be part of the decision-making process, so we can understand what the resources they have available and how to ch channel and orient those resources so it can be used, you know, to, so it can be put to the to most optimal use. The real, you know, the real action is the implication of our uh, people on the ground, because once we do have that, that those type of uh, interventions planned, if we have political civil volunteers, if we have the community level involved, it alleviates and facilitates the work that needs to be done. And the reality is that trust is probably the most important currency that you can have in a system like AD, which is fairly fragmented, which has been in crisis for decades at this stage. And you cannot achieve it without transparency. But what worries me is what I would call the infantilization of the Haitian population. Uh, whether it's the global perception or it's frankly in the operations of you know, the way things are done. When it gets down to it, there's really no system of accountability in terms of how people act on the field. Whatever changes are occurring right now are not deep enough and are not enough. And it needs to happen and it needed to happen decades ago. So I apologize, but I'm really concerned about my country. I agree with my Rose. There are many issues I think that have been lingering on for decades. Those are development issues. Unfortunately, we just treat the symptoms and the symptoms are humanitarian, but the problem is development. That's what the country needs. And I think that's also where, where most of the focus should be. We need to put things into perspective. And I think 2010, unfortunately, uh, create a lot of mistrust in terms of how the humanitarian uh, community is being perceived. Because of all those issues, I think uh, the trust of the communities into the way the humanitarian assistance was being provided was broken. And I think there are a lot of uh, workshops and, and, and papers that have been uh, developed trying to draw lessons learned from that experience and trying to provide guidance as to how to do things differently. We have a gigantic communications issue because we can recognize on the one hand that humanitarian assistance can be delivered in a much more efficient way. And I think most of us would agree to that. But I think that it's also unquestionable in my opinion that a lot of things have happened and a lot of humanitarian assistance has been delivered. And this is also why we wanna, we wanna make sure that we strengthen the community level. When I say community level, I'm talking about the brigadiers, I'm talking about the, the, the community, the municipal representation of protection civil so they can be empowered. The, the, other, the other thing that the, the, these, these people at the community level can do for us is really making sure to bridge the gap between us, what we say, what we know, what we do, and the, the, actual, the actual community that is uh, benefiting from those actions. And that's the only way we will get a real feedback on what is being done, what is not being done, and so we can, at, at all level, be able to correct it. Of course, it's not perfect. It, it's it's going to be a long road, but we do have a, I would say we do have a road map. We have a map. We're moving forward. The HRP prioritized the issue of Nexus. But this is where the one area I think where we need a constant and very frank and open conversation between the humanitarian community and the development community. If we want to actually have an impact, we need to have a conversation with the humanitarian community and development community. This needs to be a development issue fundamentally. And we need to uh, address them through a combined policies that are public policies on the specific issue. There needs to be also trade issues. And without that, we will still address the symptoms of the failure of development policies. And therefore, progress is going to be a slow and the frustration of the local communities is going to continue to increase. It's a structure that's not really happening in reality and that hurts because the problem is that there needs to be a seamless transition between, you know, humanitarian efforts because otherwise, if you don't go 
quickly enough into development and getting people back on their feet, you get uh, more extreme poverty and more dependency. So this is not just, this is where the bureaucracy needs to stop and then people need to start talking to each other and then really be community centered. We know the issues and right now we actually need to go from words to action. And that's what we, Mission City right now are trying to do. The issue right now is the fact that uh, we do not have a voice I mean, our voice is not heard enough at the highest level. It is our obligation to bring to bring this feedback back to the different coordination mechanisms we do have, be it the humanitarian country team, the working group on accountability to affected people, or the communications working group. I think there's a number of things that we can do to make sure that this feedback is properly conveyed. So I just would say that we need to focus on development, that this country has had enough of humanitarian assistance. Unfortunately, humanitarian assistance will continue to, to be a, a reality that we need to be responsive to. But if we want to tackle the issues once and for all, I think development, development, development. Try to continue to put the communities first and last, to the extent where development needs to come from a community perspective. And donors must understand that all need to be accountable to the community. And that, yes, we, all of us need to be working from a servant leader perspective and just make sure that aid is about ending aid, not sustaining it.